indicted Emiliano Rosa Rosales of Ganado on charges of aggravated sexual assault with a child and indecency with a child back in July 2021. His jury trial began Wednesday. The state and defense have both rested. Today, the 35-year-old was found guilty and sentenced to 40 years and 20 years, respectively. The sentences were stacked. Victoria County Sheriff's Office executed a felony search warrant Thursday afternoon around 3.30 in the 2100 block of East Red River. 42-year-old Jeremiah Young was taken into custody without incident by the BCSO SWAT team. Young is a fugitive out of Lavaca County and was arrested for sexual assault of a child. He is being held at the Victoria County Jail on a $50,000 bond. Austin police have charged a convicted 62-year-old murderer with two more murders. Raul Meza Jr. is described as a serial killer who's possibly linked to 10 other murders. In 1982, a third, a third grader was sexually assaulted and killed while riding her bike at an Austin elementary school. He confessed to that murder and served 11 years out of a 30-year sentence. Police arrested Meza on Monday near a bus stop. He was carrying a backpack containing duct tape, zip ties, and a gun. He was booked into the traffic County Jail. There's no initial court date set yet. Wednesday night in Hallettsville during a traffic stop in the 3000 block of U.S. Highway 77 South, police arrested 20 year old Christopher Javier Soto of Sim Smithville. Soto was found to have an outstanding warrant for his arrest for theft out of Fayette County Sheriff's Office. The Texas Department of State Health Services investigating an outbreak of shigalosis in Lawaka County. DSHS working to identify the source of the outbreak by interviewing individuals who have become sick and collecting food samples from a location where multiple individuals have eaten prior to becoming sick. If you are currently experiencing symptoms of shigella, see your doctor to get tested. Severe thunderstorms hit parts of West Texas today, causing major flooding. Cell phone video captured flash flooding on a highway near Lubbock. Several vehicles were swept off the road by swift water. About one to two inches fell within a 20 minute period. The area has received more than five inches of rain in the past 24 hours. Several major roads have to be closed down. A flood watch is in effect for the area until later tonight. Let's take a first look at your forecast with First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Mac Pettis. Mac ran into a, a little bit of rain this morning. Just you a did. little driving up. Just a, just uh, a little. Like how many drops? Did you count them? <laughs> uh, I think about uh, 17. Very good. 17, 17 <laughs> drops. That's what we call a 17% chance. Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, while West Texas is getting the big storms and we got a few sprinkles around here, the big news, of course, is this thing. And I'm calling it this thing because I'm angry at it because it can't decide if it's a tropical storm or not. It's right at 35 mile an hour circulation. It could become a named storm by tomorrow morning, but it is not going to last very long and we don't have to worry about it. But I'll have more details coming up on your seven day in just a moment. Back to you. Mac, thank you. An all clear given on the campus of Texas A&M University and College Station following a pair of bomb threats Thursday afternoon. The calls made stated bombs have been placed at two locations on campus. A spokesman for Texas A&M University Police tells KBTX they are confident that artificial intelligence technology was used to make the threats. An investigation into the source of the hoax continues. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton was suspended last week after he was impeached from office. Now Paxton will be suspended with no pay. KXAN reports the Texas Comptroller of Public Accounts said according to the Texas Constitution, no salary payment may occur to Paxton while in suspended status. Last Saturday, the Texas House voted 121 to 23 to impeach Paxton. Texas Tribune reports Paxton's annual salary over $150,000. Now, State Representative District 30 Jeannie Morrison was one of 23 House members who voted against impeachment. In a statement, Representative Morrison said, quote, I do not condone the conduct alleged to have occurred, and I am not defending Attorney General Paxton. What I do support is due process and the protection of the institution of the Texas House of Representatives. Our standards for these matters should be high. The process made known to all representatives was unnecessarily rushed. For these reasons, I opposed adoption of the impeachment resolution." Unquote. 
On Wednesday night, the House of Representatives in Washington, D.C. passed a bill potentially preventing a default. But some Republicans are not happy about House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and how he made that deal. They are looking into possibly removing him from his leadership role. The debt ceiling drama that's been hovering over Washington, D.C. for months could be coming to an end soon. The bill is passed. A deal that suspends the nation's debt limit until New Year's Day 2025 gets through the House by a vote of 314 to 117. This is the biggest cut and savings this Congress has ever voted for. And it's not that we're just voting for it. This is going to be law. In addition to addressing the debt limit, the bill also caps non-defense spending, cuts back on some COVID-19 relief funds, and expands work requirements for some food stamp recipients. The passage of this legislation is a testament to House Republicans delivering on our commitment to, an Ameri to America, an economy that's strong. 149 Republicans and 165 Democrats voted in favor of the bill. 71 Republicans and 46 Democrats voted against it. Is it everything I wanted? No. But sitting with one House, with a Democratic Senate, and a Democratic president who didn't want to meet with us, I think we did pretty dang good for the American public. President Joe Biden applauded the House vote and is urging the Senate to, quote, pass it as quickly as possible so that it can be signed into law. Nobody on either side thinks this agreement is perfect, that's for sure. Nobody got everything they wanted. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Congressman Michael Cloud was one of 14 Texas GOP members, 71 Republicans in total, who voted against the debt ceiling bill. In a Facebook post, Cloud says he voted against the bill because he believes it fails to achieve the goal of fixing the nation's fiscal troubles. Instead, the bill would continue to spend trillions of taxpayer dollars while, quote, accepting empty promises and fake commitments, unquote. He claims the only way to fix the problems is to make real spending reforms to bring down the nation's debt and preserve its economy. And so this brings us to your viewer poll tonight. Scan that QR code on your screen to vote now. The question is, do you agree with Congressman Cloud's reasons for voting against the debt ceiling bill? Yes or no? We take a look at these results tonight. 25% are saying yes and 74% stand at no. Thank you for voting tonight. Visit us tomorrow for our latest viewer poll. Another person in the U.S. has died from a fungal infection linked to certain medical procedures in Mexico. The CDC reported a third person died from a fungal meningitis outbreak. Investigators identified more than 200 U.S. residents who received epidural anesthesia at one of two clinics this year in Matamoros, just across the border from Texas. Officials say symptoms include fever and a stiff neck. They can be mild at first, but quickly become severe and life-threatening. An apartment building that partially collapsed Sunday in Davenport, Iowa, could fall at any moment. Authorities are carefully assessing whether rescuers can safely continue to search for five missing residents before they demolish the structure. Braden Colvin Sr. is one of the missing. His 18-year-old son, who bears the same name, is set to graduate from high school next Saturday and is waiting outside of the building to hear if they found his father. I haven't slept. I've been out here for three days at night, all night, just waiting for anything. What's happening for you this weekend? I'm supposed to be graduating in three days, walk across the stage. We have finals this week. I tried to go Tuesday to school, and as soon as I walked in, I just broke down, and I was just crying. I couldn't do it. Being around all them people, my friends and stuff, just seeing me like that. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to go to the graduation. The owner of the building was cited for failing to maintain the structure in a safe and structurally sound condition. He faces a $300 fine and court cost if he is found guilty or doesn't contest the citation. And don't forget the Victoria ISD received a summer meal distribution program. Students can get free breakfast and free lunch. The Victoria ISD's Child Nutrition Department oversees the distribution to ensure all children 18 years and younger have access to food over the summer. Just drop by Allo Elementary each Monday and Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. Stay with us coming up on 25 News Now at 10. The body of a missing doctor in Missouri found in an Arkansas lake. 
Also ahead, a judge in Missouri has ruled that the case involving an 84-year-old man shooting a teenager by mistake be sealed to the public. 25 News Now brings you Storm Prep 2023. Your first warned storm team will take us through this year's hurricane predictions. Chief Meteorologist Mac Perez speaks with descendants of Indianola, a town that was wiped out from back-to-back -back hurricanes. Adarius McCormick explains just how simple evacuating really is. June 5th on KAVU-TV at 6.30 p.m. Storm Prep 2023. Stream it live or on demand on Crossroads Today Plus. View it and our Crossroads Today YouTube page. The Senate voted today on legislation to block President Biden's student debt relief program. The 52 to 46 vote for the repeal cited largely along party lines with the exception of a few moderate senators. The resolution repeals the Biden administration's program to cancel up to $10,000 in loans for those who income falls below a certain level and up to $20,000 to students who receive Pell Grants. It ended a pandemic era pause on student loan payments and accrued interest. The legislation now heads to President Biden's desk. The body of a man missing for more than a week was discovered in Beaver Lake. The doctor disappeared on May 21st after his shift at a hospital. That was in Missouri. A kayaker found his body yesterday in Arkansas. The sheriff's office says he had an apparent gunshot wound. I've seen him a few times in the, in the ER. And, you know, I have family members that work at the, at the clinic. Jimmy Cotton has spent the last few days at Beaver Lake, but he lives near Cassville. And like many, he's been following the case of the missing Dr. John Forsythe closely. It's, it's pretty crazy. I mean, he just disappeared out of nowhere. And then now this yesterday. So I want to walk you through what we know so far. We know that Dr. Forsythe left his job at the Mercy ER here in Cassville right behind me. He made his way across the street to his RV, which is located right here. Now you see these people standing here. That is with the Benton County Sheriff's Office. They are doing their own investigation as we speak. A witness says that his black infinity was seen right behind here after 730. 
And as of Tuesday, Dr. Forsythe's body was found on Beaver Lake at Lost Bridge South. It's a windy 36 minute drive from Cassville to Lost Bridge where Dr. Forsythe's body was found in the water by a kayaker. The sheriff's office says Dr. Forsythe had an apparent gunshot wound. Sitting here and I've seen cop cars come flying in here like crazy. Julie Sizemore says her family visits here a lot, but it's usually calm. Never have ever anything happened like this ever. Detectives say things are complicated because this case has crossed state lines. In law enforcement, we are. We're always always working with other agencies. Um, we all have the same goal in mind, and that's solving a crime or a disappearance in this case. Witnesses say the weekend was busy at the lake, and the body was found in a popular swimming cove, leaving more questions than answers. The body was taken to the Arkansas Crime Lab this morning for an autopsy. A judge in Missouri has ruled that information in the first degree assault case against a man who reportedly shot a teen who knocked on his door by mistake be sealed to the public. Clay's County judge said Andrew Lester accused of shooting 16 year old Ralph Yarl may be able or may not be able to get a fair trial because of a case because of the case's public attention. The reason for this is so the public won't be able to publicly view the documents each side files in the case. In his ruling, the judge cited threats to Lester's life and threats to his wife's safety. This ruling could also have an effect on witnesses coming forward. Beauty sleep is important, but a new study finds that sleeping isn't just for good looks. It can also help your body respond to a vaccine. When you get a vaccine, your body makes proteins called antibodies that can help you respond quickly to an infection. People who sleep more than six hours a night make more antibodies than those who don't, according to a recent study from the University of Chicago. That doesn't mean vaccines don't work in people who get less sleep, but it shows the strong relationship between sleep and the immune health system. The National Sleep Foundation recommends at least seven hours of sleep every night to help your immune system work its best. So next time you get a shot, think about heading to bed a little bit sooner. With this Medical Minute, I'm Justin Finch, ABC News. Atlantic hurricane season officially kicked off today. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has said this year we'll have 12 to 17 named storms. Of those, five to nine could become hurricanes. Forecasters at Colorado State calling for a slightly below normal season. This year could be unpredictable, but there's also near record warm ocean temperatures, which fuel storms. Already, the Hurricane Center is watching an area in the eastern Gulf of Mexico for tropical development, and we know someone else who has been watching that system. Yes, as a matter of fact, we're watching it very closely. We're talking about system off the coast of Florida. For us, we had a pretty nice warm day. It's a fairly balmy night now, only 77 degrees. We are looking at today's high temperature right at 90 degrees, and that is our average temperature for this time of year because it's getting to look like summertime. Coming up, we'll be talking about that uh, potential first tropical storm of the season. We'll see if it becomes Arlene or not in, in a little bit. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Well, good evening, everyone. Yes, we uh, had a few little light itty bitty showers. I mean, we're quite, what was it? 17 drops that uh, Don got earlier. 17, today. yes. yes. Uh, and, and here in the city, uh, I didn't see one. I mean, all I saw was the drops falling off my, my brow of the perspiration. So the coastal bend is fairly quiet right now. Most of Texas is quiet, except for up here. You heard about the flooding. Big storms over the uh, panhandle. They rolled into uh, central North Texas uh, this afternoon, but they're all falling apart, and it doesn't look like it's going to get as far as Dallas. Now, for the next couple of days, here's what we're looking at. The dry line stays out here, triggering storms. Here's the one that came through tonight. We've got high pressure over us. That's why the showers are at minimum uh, 17 drops. But then what is this thing going to do? And I'm a little frustrated with it. Because first, it was a low uh, along a front that wasn't going to become tropical. Then it picked up its own circulation. And now it's forecast to drop very, very south. Uh, and tomorrow, being Friday, uh, it does have a window of maybe 12 hours where it could strengthen to a tropical storm. Because it's right now at 35 knots. If it gets up to 40 knots, it's a tropical, they'll name it Arlene. The hurricane center is basically watching it because it's on the threshold there. Uh, and then it's forecast to drop off and fall apart down here. So that's the interesting thing that it is barely, it's, you see it's asymmetrical. In other words, it's got all the clouds and the rain on one side and the other side is not well organized. So if it was symmetrical, it'd be round and round, okay? So it's gonna drop south and fall apart here on in western Cuba and then the remnants are expected to flow northbound so the remnants themselves are the concern that are going to produce quite a bit of rain in South Florida two to four inches of rain there rain in the Bahamas and even rain in Cuba as well so their models when you see this they're in consensus that means they agree they're all it's going south then right here they widen up that means they don't agree on which path it'll take but we know that it'll fall apart and then continue with its remnants going in that direction what i'm going to show you over the course of the, the season is you're going to see these lines these are uh, isobars we'll just call them isobars for now i mean they're actually a little bit more complicated but for for grins uh, the storm is there as it drops down here, it's going to cross one line, and that's going to be the shear that to uh, cuts off the top of it. Therefore, it falls apart here, and the remnants will follow uh, the upper winds uh, all the way across uh, the Atlantic. And so uh, the Bahamas are actually in a drought. They're surrounded by seawater. They haven't had any rain, fresh water, for the rivers and the creeks and for you know, human consumption. Here's the interesting part if Arlene does develop tomorrow or overnight. Here's June 1st. It's the absolute beginning of the tropical storms. If you average up all the hurricanes ever, the peak of the season is September, okay? So we're at the beginning of the season and that we get a named storm and that is, it is fairly unorganized and certainly not following what we expect. And just remember the water temperature is up to mid 80s already and that is prime brewing season for what could be, I believe, a very active storm season. Partly cloudy, warm and humid, around 90 degrees and a slight chance of a shower or two coming in over the weekend. That is it from the uh, weather front. We want to remind you that we have a QR code, a crossroads today, and put it on your phone and take us wherever you need to go. And now let's go over to Gino with sports. We're not gonna do basketball. Uh, not right now. We got baseball first. The athlete of the week is on the verge of leading his team to a state berth. That's coming up after the break.
At a crossroads, the Shiner Comanches faced off in the regional finals against the Johnson City Eagles. Let's check out those highlights. Shiner had a two-run lead heading into the final inning, but Shiner was not satisfied. Carson Schutte knocks one to center field to get on first base, but next up, Landon Poehler would be the one who knocks it up the middle to bring in the third RBI of the night. The other two came off a two-run shot in the fifth inning. Johnson City showed fight by hitting a leadoff double in the final inning of play, and things were looking a little shaky for Shiner, but the Comanches would put the rest of the batters away to go on and win 5-2. Game two will be tomorrow in Marion again. Shiner just needs to win one more game of the next two to make it back to the state tournament for the third straight season. And the Athlete of the Week is hoping to lead his team to the third straight tournament appearance, and he pitched again tonight. And he accomplished one of the rarest things that a pitcher can accomplish, which is pitching a perfect game. What is a perfect game? It's when nobody gets on base at all. This is different from a no-hitter because in a no-hitter, a batter can reach a base from a walk or hit by pitch, and it can still be considered a no-hitter. There have only been 23 perfect games in MLB history. The Shiner Comanche's pitching staff have thrown two this year, including one by senior Ryan Peterson. The senior has thrown multiple no-hitters, perfect games, and shutouts in his short career, including a shutout in his last appearance when Shiner beat Mumford 4-0. The Sam Houston State commit never goes into a game looking to pitch a complete game, but he says he cannot do it alone. I mean, everyone in their position, they, they get to the ball quick and they, feel, they work hard every day. And uh, it's great to have that Ryan Jones a pitcher and you can always count on your defense. The perfect game came against the Refugio Bobcats, which are Shiner's biggest rival in any sport. After the game, the senior was sure to pick up the ball and add it to his collection so he can look back on it and cherish the memory. When he is on the verge of completing one of the top accomplishments a pitcher can achieve, he focuses on the little things. Keep doing what I've been doing all game. Uh, don't try and overthrow or put too much pressure on myself. Just go out there and keep throwing well and have a good have a good out. The only thing the Comanche wants to accomplish now is to win a state title, which has been in his grasp the past two seasons but he has come up short twice. In the game, Ryan had eight strikeouts, no walks, no hits, and in the fourth round last week, he had six strikeouts, no runs, and only two hits, which is why Ryan Peterson is your Athlete of the Week. And tonight, he also had four more strikeouts to go along with the game tonight. The Texas Collegiate League started last night and continued today. The Generals took on the Baton Rouge Rougarou and would fall by 1.5 to 4 yesterday, but the Generals took on the Acadiana Cane Cutters, and the Generals were trailing until the final inning, but they came back and tied the game at nine runs apiece. The stream cut out, so we'll try to update you as soon as we get the latest on that game. Well, that's your sports, Don and Karina. Back to you. Thanks, Gina. Now stay with us. Coming up on 25 News Now at 10, we'll take a last look at your weather. Plus, STEM Middle School Viper Band kicked off their summer drum set band camp.
A full-time pastor is offering to catch rattlesnakes for people in Las Vegas free of charge. As temperatures rise, they look for places to escape the sun, and that could mean a person's backyard. Pastor Tim Angelo says his congregation looks for creative ways to serve the community. For him, that means snake removal. The pastor says he's <laughs> always had an interest in the animals and would like to see them safely relocated rather than killed. The pastor says rattlesnakes are important to the ecosystem because they keep rodents away. Good luck to them. Strong <laughs> winds from Typhoon Mawar buffeted parts of Okinawa Prefecture in Japan today. Authorities issued a storm warning on the island overnight to brace for the second typhoon of the season. So far, there were no reports of injuries or damage to buildings as of late morning. Winds of up to 45 meters per second, that's 100 miles an hour, were expected to blow. Authorities said all 26 elementary and junior high schools in the city were closed. First day of national, or excuse me, Atlantic hurricane season. Fortunately, around here, Mac, dull. Here, <laughs> here is dull, but look at what we've got to, to look forward to. The uh, Colorado State predicts 13 named storms. National Hurricane Center, 15. The Un United Kingdom mm. Meteorological Office predicts 20, and I predict 22. Ooh. So 14 is the average, and we'll find out who's closest to the hole. Uh, at the end of the season, so that's what well, I'll be we exciting got. to watch. Mm -hmm. Back to you. Thank you, Mac. Drum roll, please. Or drum beat. We'll take that too. The third <laughs> annual summer drum and drum set camp taking place at Stroman Middle School. This is a free drum camp offered for Victoria ISD band students going into seventh, eighth, and ninth grades. STEM Middle School band director Richie Rodriguez founded the camp three years ago and says since its start. Attendance in the camp has grown and it allows an opportunity for band students to focus on sharpening their skills using a drum set. Oftentimes the students don't receive the opportunity, especially in, in middle school, to learn drum set because there's other priorities. They have to learn other instruments and they have music for the band they have to perform. So drum set is one of those things unfortunately gets pushed back in the back burner. So it is my job and duty to put forth the opportunity for the students to be able to perform on a drum set. Rodriguez says this program is a nonprofit with all of their equipment coming from donations. If you're interested in donating music equipment, they are in need of percussion instruments from drums and cymbals to snares and drumsticks. Come to CrossroadsToday.com to learn more about this annual drum camp. Great timing for summer. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys, and thank you for joining us for 25 News Now at 10. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Join Carolina Astorin and Meteorologist Trey Mining. 25 News Now Sunrise starting at 5 a.m. Good night, everybody. <laughs>